Well, good afternoon and thanks so much for joining us uh, today for our uh, presentation on the topic of charitable planning with business owners. My name is Jordan Richardson and I'm Senior Charitable Giving Advisor here at the Community Foundation of Greater Des Moines. And I have the privilege uh, to work with professional advisors like yourselves just about every day uh, supporting the charitable planning uh, for your clients. And one theme that I and others at the Community Foundation have heard over the last number of years is the importance of specifically having planning conversations with business owner clients, uh, which is why we wanted to have this conversation today. And we've been fortunate enough over those several years to work with uh, you and other professional advisors to facilitate some charitable giving uh, with those business owner uh, clients, you know, everything from using shares of those privately held businesses to fund a donor advice fund or to establish an endowment for those individuals' favorite charities. And in all of those cases, where we've had a chance to be at that planning table with you and with your clients. Uh, we found that in each of those conversations, there's a high value on pre-planning and a high value on uh, collaboration across a team of advisors rather than just one or two. So with all that in mind, uh, we thought it was really important today to be uh, proactive together and having conversations around uh, what it might look like to talk about charitable giving with those business owner clients. And we're thrilled to introduce you to uh, the, the team at Advance Iowa today. Advance Iowa is a program of the University of Northern Iowa, uh, and they are in the business of educating and supporting business owners across the state of Iowa. And so with us today, we have Stacy and Deb, uh, Stacy Molinex is the program manager at Advance Iowa. Among her 20 years of small business experience includes owning her own company and consulting with various companies ranging from small family shops to multi-million dollar organizations. With Advance Iowa, Stacy assists companies in identifying value drivers for business growth, providing valuation assessments, and offering customized succession planning. And also today we have uh, Deb Garuso, and she's a senior program manager with Advance Iowa, dealing specifically with business ownership transitions. She's a wealth strategist with a focus and specialty in serving business owners and their families' financial resources. And perhaps my favorite fact about Deb is she is the former board chair for the Community Foundation of Northern, Northeast Iowa, which gives her some firsthand experience with charitable planning for business owners from the perspective of the Community Foundation. I'm really happy to have the two of you here with us today. For the rest of you, uh, we're really thankful that you're here. Uh, you know the Zoom world uh, just as well as we do at this point in time, but I'll share that the chat function is open throughout our presentation today. We've got about an hour together and there's plenty of time for Q&A at the end, but if you have questions for, uh, for the Community Foundation or for Stacy or Deb throughout the presentation, you wanna throw it in the chat, feel free to do so. We're also recording today's presentation and we'll be sure to send you a, a copy of the recording afterwards. So I'll turn it over to Stacy and Deb. Thank you, Jordan. Uh, welcome, and uh, thank you to everyone who is attending today, as well as to the Community Foundation of Greater Des Moines for uh, allowing us to present. Um, as Jordan mentioned, my name is Stacy, and Deb Giruso will be uh, joining me a little bit uh, uh, about halfway through the pres presentation. Uh, just to speak a little bit about Advance Iowa, uh, we are a business outreach center here at, uh, univers the, at the University of Northern Iowa, uh, offering business solutions to small and medium-sized enterprises. This includes business growth and development with peers with, with services such as financial literacy, peer-to-peer -peer groups, valuations, business continuity, and succession planning. Uh, today, we're going to talk about exit planning and the strategies to minimize taxes with charitable giving. Uh, here's a, not a little disclaimer, but it's a big disclaimer, but feel free to read it. Um, basically, it's just a, a disclaimer that says that this presentation is only for uh, general nature and not of any legal tax or financial advice. Uh, any examples are hypothetical and for illustrative purposes only. And to please contact your legal accounting tax or financial professional for specific details and how this information may apply to you. Exit planning, a formal planning process which clarifies the strategy for the business owner to control their future. So the best time to start exit planning is the day that that business opens. The second best time is today. And why does that matter? Because 79% of business owners plan to exit their business in the next 10 years. The bad thing is that only 17% of these business owners have a written plan to actually leave. So a goal without a plan is just a wish. 
and not having a plan is just crossing your fingers and hoping that all goes well. That typically does not turn out well for the business owner. Another startling fact is that in reality, only about a quarter of the businesses that are for sale actually do sale. That means that three out of four businesses either leave, excuse me, that three out of four businesses either close the doors or liquidate when the owner leaves. So Benjamin Franklin famously said, if you fail to plan, then you are planning to fail. 85% of owner wealth is tied up in the value of their business. That is not good for the owner who cannot sell the business. And it's not good for the employees or, the, or their community. So there are seven steps, seven steps to exit planning. Step number one is to identify the exit objectives. So what are the owner's financial and value-based goals? Value-based goals can include like the legacy, what they want to give back to their community, or even their employees. Step number two is to calculate the financial resources. They need to identify the business and personal financial resources. So they can calculate the financial gap between these, between these resources and the owner's goals. So for example, if the owner wants to, uh, needs to have a million dollars to sell his business for a million dollars so that he can um, live all the, uh, meet all the goals and objectives that he wants to and live the life that he wants to live after he, after he sells the business and his business is only worth $500,000 at this current time, there's a pretty big financial gap there. So we need to figure out what those goals are, what that financial gap in this hypothetical case would be $500,000. And that brings us to step number three, how to build and preserve that business value. So he needs to grow the business to eliminate that financial, to eliminate that financial gap, to protect the existing value, and then preserve the value with strategic planning and tax minimization. Step number four and five is to determine the, success, the successor. He needs to uh, decide if he's going to do an inside transfer to maybe family or employees, or if he's looking at an external sale to third party. Step number six is the business continuity planning. He needs to ensure that the goals are realized whether or not he survives the business. So if he would happen to, let's say he gets into a car accident, has a heart attack, he needs to make sure the business can continue if he's not able to be there. And step number seven, he needs to figure out the uh, figure out the step for the personal wealth and estate planning. So that means he needs to coordinate the estate plan with his exit goals to ensure that there's financial security for the family. Uh, thank you, Stacy. Uh, as many of you are well aware of the benefits of donating appreciated assets versus uh, donating cash. Uh, because as long as you're filing a uh, itemized return, you can take advantage of the tax deduction equal to the market value of the donated asset or if you were giving cash. So that's a benefit of uh, donating. And the second, which is the real benefit, uh, the primary benefit of donating appreciated assets versus cash is that you're donation goes farther. In essence, you can donate more, you can increase that donation because you're avoiding the capital gains tax on those appreciated assets. The, the donor hasn't sold the assets, it's the nonprofits such as the community foundation that's selling the assets. So there's that avoidance of capital gains tax uh, by donating appreciated assets. And what I want to focus on specifically today is that while many times we think of the appreciated assets as those assets that are liquid, marketable, like publicly traded stocks, uh, appreciated assets can also be that business ownership interest. And as was mentioned earlier this afternoon, for small business owners especially, the majority of their wealth is tied up in uh, <clears throat> that pro in their business. So that's their primary resource that they can use and so to donate. And so what my focus today is that as you work with clients who are entering that transition phase of planning to exit their business, 
possibly retiring. And that client also has philanthropic goals. There is a process that you can work with with that client to achieve both their financial security uh, objectives from transitioning out of their business, as well as meeting those philanthropic goals. And so we're going to go through those, those planning steps today. And the first step is to prepare to donate early. Second is to identify any restrictions that the business owner may have in the ability to transfer that business ownership interest. And then there's the requirement of a business appraisal. Uh, if, we're, if you're going to donate those appreciated assets, you have to have a qualified appraisal. And finally, the fourth step is to determine the charitable structure. How are you going to set up the donation? What is the structure that's going to hold that donation? So to go through each of the steps in more detail. The first step is prepare to donate early. And this may be five, 10 years before your act, the client's actually ready to uh, sell the business and uh, implement that philanthropic goal. It's critical that the donation plan is ready before the business is sold. In other words, that business interest has to be donated to the charitable organization prior to the sale. It has to be completed, it has to be implemented before that sales contract is signed. And it needs to be very clear to the IRS that that sale has not already happened. Uh, if the IRS identifies that it's a prearranged sale, it's possible that they would deny that avoidance of capital gains tax. The second piece there is to understand the business structure and the impact. How is the business set up? Is it set up as a C corp? Is it set up as a, an S corp? Is it set up as an LLC? Or what is the structures? Because for example, the C Corp being a separate legal uh, tax entity actually makes the process less complicated. Whereas the sub S and the LLC as flow through organizations where the entity itself doesn't pay taxes, but the, it flows through to the owners, it becomes more complex. Complicated, And so it's very possible that as part of the preparation to donate that business interest, it may make sense for the ownership structure to change. But again, if the client is planning to do that, that needs to be done several years in advance. So the timing of meeting those philanthropic goals combined with selling the business is a multi-year process, and it's critical that you prepare early. The second step and part of that preparation is to identify what restrictions may be in place that would limit or uh, result in the transfer not being possible. For example, are there other owners? Are there partners in this business? And are those partners receptive to uh, the donation of an interest, business interest? to a charitable organization. There may be contracts such as a right of first refusal that may limit that business owner's ability to donate business interest. And then there may be issues regarding the debt that the business holds. There may be issues that uh, need to be resolved before the donation is made because there is uh, outstanding debt that is owned by the organization, or that the, what personal debt that the client may have that's related to the business. So identify what restrictions are in place that need to be removed before uh, this donation can be made. And then I mentioned earlier about this appraisal requirement. The IRS requires that a qualified appraisal be done no earlier than 60 days before the donation 
and no later than the annual tax return due date, including any extensions. So for example, uh, if you're extending your taxes and your taxes aren't for 21 or not due until October 15th of 22, that would be the, the end date for getting that appraisal. So you can see how planning becomes so important because you can't, you don't want to donate the assets too soon. You want to make sure all the restrictions are gone, but you need to make sure the assets are donated before there's an actual sale in place. And you also have to make sure that that appraisal is done on a timely basis. And again, the point is that it needs to be a qualified appraisal that the IRS will accept, not just an estimate of the business valuation, but a qualified appraisal, which is gonna probably cost a few thousand dollars. And then recognizing that the IRS can accept the full market value as the value of your donated your donation, or they can discount it because it is a closely held business, which means that it's um, illiquid and they recognize that minority interest discount. So it's very important with that appraisal uh, to get the valuation and to verify with um, your legal and accounting uh, professionals that the IRS is going to recognize uh, what value, full market value, a discount because it's a minority interest. And, and you, of course, you want to make sure that it's not at a cost basis because you want to take advantage of the appreciated asset when you're donating it versus cash. And then what's the structure that you want to use to make that donation. Because typically it's going to be a large donation, a one-time large donation with the intention of giving to uh, charities and other nonprofits over time. So it could be as simple as there's one chair, one organization, one nonprofit that the client is, that's the only organization that they are concerned about and they want this to go into that particular nonprofit's endowment uh, fund, their endowment. But more likely than not, they're, they want more flexibility. And so one option, depending on the size of uh, the intended donation, is possibly a private foundation. Uh, if there's a significant philanthropy goal, uh, it's possible that that business owner wants to set up their very own uh, private foundation. It allows that donor to maintain control, which when you're dealing with business owners, that tends to be something that is, is important to them. However, it has a significant amount of work to set up and to maintain and can be uh, somewhat expensive, both in the setup and the maintenance. Another option would be a charitable trust. Now, a charitable trust may be a viable option for that business owner who has philanthropic uh, objectives and wants to donate, but is concerned that the value of the business is not large enough for them to meet their philanthropic goals and their financial security over their remaining time, their, uh, their retirement years. And so a charitable trust, a remainder charitable trust may be a viable option for them as the structure because they can set it up where they are able to use the income stream from the sale of the business. And then what is left over after they, they die upon death, the remainder of it goes to charity. Now, obviously that impacts the amount that is um, recognized as the tax deduction, uh, et cetera. But again, it's meeting that need of that potential donor, that client who is concerned about the income stream that they're going to need after they sell the business. And so the third is the donor advised fund, which is the, the one that I want to spend the most time on this afternoon, because I think it's probably an excellent choice for many clients. It's a public charity 
i.e. a community foundation. And now you're able to tap into those resources. Because as Jordan mentioned at the very beginning, uh, the Community Foundation of Greater Des Moines is in the business of accepting complex asset donations, whether it's publicly traded stocks, whether it's farmland, whether it's interest in uh, a business, a small business. So they have the experience of dealing with complex asset donations. And they also, because of that, have the expertise to facilitate that donation and work with the business owner and the professional team to maximize the tax benefits. So that it's maximizing the tax benefits and it's maximizing the donation. And in a, a perfect world or an ideal world, uh, it's very possible that that business owner would recognize that the, benefit, the savings in taxes is equal to the donation and they're, they're able to meet their philanthropic goals without having to change their uh, financial security goals uh, in retirement. And of course, it also gives that donor the flexibility. So the single gift is able to support multiple causes over time. And depending on uh, the organization and the discussion with the development uh, team, such as Jordan, determines whether it's one generation, two generations, or three generations that are uh, specifying or advising how they would like uh, those uh, gifts to be distributed over time, how they would like that uh, donor advice fund to be uh, doing good. And of course, there's even tax benefits. Typically, and again, we're not providing legal advice and it would be having to verify, but if it's a donor advised fund, that charitable deduction on your itemized return can be as much as 30% of the um, AGI, whereas typically with a private foundation, it's only 20%. So again, uh, while there are multiple structures that a client, a donor can choose from, a donor advised fund, especially with an organization like the Community Foundation, is an excellent choice in that planning process. And so in summary, I would just like to uh, say, a re read this quote that is from an article on charitable giving uh, with small, from small businesses that was in Forbes last year. Uh, tax smart strategic philanthropy can be a powerful way for you to leverage the sale of your business for good. Don't miss this moment to make a difference. And that is really, in my opinion, the key aspect that by planning in advance, and working with the, your professional team, as many of you are uh, working with your clients, that there are ways to take advantage of the tax code so that uh, those business owners can take care of their families and also do good for their communities and give back to their communities. Thank you. Thanks, well, thank Deb. you so much, Deb and Stacy, and we'll open it up for questions from the room. If you have questions, feel free to come off mute, or as I mentioned before, you can enter them into the chat and we'll respond to those accordingly. Uh, I'll kick us off with one question that I had uh, for you, Deb, as I was mm -hmm. hearing from you. Uh, one observation you made that was, uh, raised my, my ears, if you will, was uh, under the requirement for appraisal step of the, the charitable planning. Uh, you mentioned that you wanna verify with the IRS that a fair market value uh, appraisal will be accepted. Is there is there a good practice for determining how we determine if it's going to be, if IRS is going to treat it as fair market value or as a discounted value? Uh, that is a, uh, more of a technical legal question, Jordan, that uh, would require going through the tax code. And that's where I would say that that's uh, a question for the client's CPA to be verifying what steps need to be 
accomplished to verify that the IRS is going to recognize it at full market value. And it could be something like changing uh, the corporate structure uh, to a C-Corp uh, to, to simplify. So there are ways to go through the tax code and verify that it will be that it will meet that uh, criteria. And again, I would say that the the combination of this uh, CPA and the attorney are the two uh, resources that I would recommend uh, a business owner work closely with them to verify that they are uh, dotting all the I's and crossing the T's so that it doesn't come as a surprise after they've made the donation. Uh, that the IRS is not going to recognize the full market value. And I think the appraisal, I think that's probably one of the issues that may not always happen is making sure that that appraisal gets done. Because with the appraisal, then you have documentation that that is the true value of the business. And especially if it's a external sale, uh, that's good documentation that that's how an outsider views the value of, of the business. Great, thank you. Other questions from the room this afternoon? Well, see, seeing none, I think that we will uh, give ourselves the gift of some time uh, this afternoon and, and adjourn now. I really appreciate uh, Stacy and Deb, your time uh, with us this afternoon. Uh, for those of you attending again, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, we will be sending a recording of this to you via email in the next couple of days, uh, as well as the slide deck that you saw from Stacy and Deb. And as you're thinking about your clients, whether they're business owners or otherwise, and, and thinking about charitable planning with them, we encourage you to give us a call. And if you have a specific topic that you'd love to learn more about as we prepare for future trainings like this one, love to hear about that as well. So thanks so much. Enjoy the rest of your day.